Yeah, we're at the track covering the sport of kings. Coming up in this week's show, the start of Jamaica's road to the Triple Crown Series, wins for the Philip Banadura in the Hotline Stakes, and the cold allegiance in the Sir Howard Stakes. Former TNT Dab winner Soka Harmon is set for her Guyana debut this weekend in Port Morant, and a stakes double for Barbadian trainer Safi Joseph Jr. at Florida's Tampa Bay Downs. Plus the usual check-in on Caribbean success on the North American continent, our opening story from Jamaica. On a Saturday-Sunday weekend of racing at Caymanus Park, the St. Cecilia Cup run in honor of the two-time Horse of the Year and holder of the Caymanus Park record 14 wins in a row was the weekend's richest event, the Houston Stables Desert of Malibu, with Radish Roman aboard for trainer Gary Sabrati, the heavy odds-on favorite for the six-and-a-half furlong run. There's the field. Number two, Further and Beyond, who won the 2022 St. Cecilia Cup, is a 13-to-1 bet, 1-to-9 for the favorite Desert of Malibu in the three-box. The only other entries with notable betting support, number five, Divine Force at 3 to 1, seven, Madeline Sunshine at 13 to 1, and nine, Bootylicious at 11 to 1. Mid race, Brand Rickman picks up the call with a favorite on a gate to wire bid. Desert of Malibu is in charge under Radish Roman. He's looking for his fourth win on the card. There goes on the outside a bootylicious Madeline Sunshine is in a handy spot if good enough. A gift from Ben finds a run against the rail. Further and beyond racing back in behind them. Then Emperor of the Cats press conference Rainsville and Divine Force with a mountain to climb. But Desert of Malibu not messing about will arrive at the 316th pole with a good looking lead. And the rider now becomes a busy man changing his hold and Desert of Malibu responds by opening the lead inside now the final furlong it's desert of malibu here is further and beyond now asked to close a four or five length gap but desert of malibu is swift on the legs and desert of malibu will take the saint cecilia cup by maybe three jockey radish roman closing a four-timer here as desert of malibu rebounds impressively from her surprise loss in last month's reggae trophy race over five furlongs straight as a heavy 1-9 to nine favorite, the Houston Stables Desert of Malibu wins Saturday's St. Cecilia with authority by three lengths over former winner Further and Beyond, clocking 1 minute 19 and 4 fifths for the 6.5 furlong trip for trainer Gary Sabrati. Also Saturday, the Hotline Stakes honoring the 1975 champion two-year-old and 1976 Horse of the Year, the first important prep for the Phillies Guineas, watch the 2-1 to one second favorite Banadura with Robert Halladine aboard in the Red Silks chasing in second. As the leaders come racing away toward the final three, Crypto Girl out in front, Banadura in hot pursuit, three parts of a length down. A gap of five or six lengths opens up to Nerissa's Angel, Miss Cherry in between horses, oh so smart and Blue Sensation asked to make ground as they come thundering into the top of the lane, they leave the quarter pole behind Crypto Girl battling and holding that lead. Banadura continues to attack on the outside, they're eye to eye as they drive to the furlong pole Banadura in the red now points the nose in front. Crypto Girl continues the battle on the rail. It's Banadura driven to the max. Crypto Girl trying to close the gap once again but Banadura begins to slip away from Crypto Girl. It's Banadura coming away. A double for the connections with later Zan CD. First start as a three-year-old Banadura workmanlike in a satisfying victory rebounding from her on place Jamaica two-year-old stakes effort in December. Jockey Robert Halladin, who had won three consecutive St. Cecilia races with Nipster, Further and Beyond, and Amfred, but did not have a ride in this year's edition, gets the job done here for owner Miller de Zan and champion trainer Jason da Costa. Banadura, 2 to 1 odds by three lengths over Crypto Girl and Come Home to Me, clocking 1 minute 15 and 3 fifths for the six furlong trip. The hotline stakes for Phil is this, closing a double for Jockey Halladin and trainer da Costa. 24 hours later, six goals for the early 2000 Guinness prep. The Sir Howard Stakes run in honor of the 1983 Horse of the Year. The top three betting choices, including the even money favorite, Teflon Don, on the front end here in a wide open event, heading for the home turn. Teflon Don attempting to escape pursuit, goes on by a length and a half. World Surprise pushed down into second, Jay Spieth right there in third, cutting the corner on the rail as they leave the third pole. King's Crown needs to find four or more, play fair now wound up on the outside, and Allegiance also needs to five, possibly five, as they come thundering into the top of the lane in the 30th running of the Sir Howard Stakes. And up front, Jay Spieth has now come through to snatch that lead. World Surprise, a danger on the outside. Teflon Don has faded back toward the center of horses and Allegiance starts to run on, on the rail, but it is Jay Spieth inside the final furlong. Here is Allegiance now wound up with a kick down against the fence. It is Jay Spieth driven to the max. Allegiance now bubbling to the boil on the rail and Allegiance is traveling strong and Allegiance will win the 30th running of the Sir Howard Stakes.
The unfancied allegiance closing stoutly here under champion jockey Ryan Lewis on the rail to snatch the narrow win over the favourite Jay Spieth with leading jockey Tevin Foster aboard. Lewis inactive in recent months due to injury but cops a big one here with a fine rail run aboard Allegiance, giving trainer Anthony Nunes his third Sir Howard Tramp in four years, having scored also in 2021 with Calculus and last year with El Afortunado. At 91 odds, the Yardis Tables Allegiance snatches the win by a half length over the 4 to 5 favourite Jay Spieth with World Surprise third at 3 to 1. The winning time 116 and 1 fifth for the 6 furlong sprint. One of three wins on the afternoon, two for trainer Nunes. To Florida now, where the Barbadian trainer Safi Joseph Jr. is closing in on 100 stakes wins in North America. He's now at 92, following a pair of added money successes at Tampa Bay Downs on the weekend. The first of his two $110,000 wins coming in the Stonehenge Farm South Sophomore Philly Stakes, his Mystic Lake, a heavy favorite on the top jock Edgar Zass, and there was hardly a threat in the gate to wire run. They come into the lane and Mystic Lake kicks away now. Mystic Lake and Edgar Zayas by the eighth pole in front by three and a half or four now. Gervin's Princess up to a clear-cut second. Hopes and dreams down on the inside. Miss Saley trying to battle back for third, but inside the final 16th, a very professional easy win here for Mystic Lake. Mystic Lake by three and a half lengths chased by the 9-1 bet Gervin's Princess clocking 123.37 for the seven furlong run. Back-to-back -back stakes wins this for Mystic Lake, who had won the Gasparilla Stakes in mid-January, also at Tampa Bay Downs. An hour later, added money win number two on the afternoon for Safi Joseph Jr., just as comfortably as well. His even money bet, Mish, taking control coming off the final bend. And that settled it. Mish and Sammy Camacho to the top of the stretch, suddenly two in front of Zydeco. If not for luck, Dean Delivers going to cue toward the far outside for his run as they have a final furlong left to go. Mish is in front by three. Zydeco, if not for luck, Dean Delivers down the far outside, but a final 16 to go, and it's all Mish. Mish going to lead him here. Mish, late run from if not for luck up to second, but Mish wins the Naira Bet sprint. Sammy Camacho in the saddle for this win by three and a quarter lengths. Mish clear of the 12 to one shot if not for luck, and stops the clock at 109.82 for six furlongs. Safi Joseph, who has had as many as six wins coming at Gulfstream Park and Tampa Bay Downs since our last show, now eight wins away from 100 stakes victories in North America. And I can tell you before we go that uh, the 2022 Trinidad and Tobago Derby winner, Soka Harmony, makes her Guyana debut this weekend in the Easter Cup feature at the Port Moran Turf Club. Bought recently by the KP Jaglio Racing Stables, Soka Harmony boasts a solid TNT career, coming off wins last year in the Stewart's Cup and Caribbean Champion Stakes, and TNT jock Rika Hernandez is in for the ride. She won sprint day races, and she's a very good filly, and as we can say, we're taking our time with her, and hope for the best on Sunday. Jockey Rico Hernandez there, so all the best to him and Soka Harmony in Guyana. Our usual weekly tally of wins now for Caribbean racing men in the USA. Before we go, in the past week since our last show, I've counted 21 victories. Among them, a Barbadian combo at Aqueduct in New York, jockey Elijah Greenwich winning for trainer Ricardo Legal. The ex-Jamaica champion jockey Anthony Thomas won at Gulfstream Park this week, and there were two wins at Charlestown for the Barbadian jockey Rashawn Latchman. We've been at the track covering top stories and exciting races in the sport of kings. Check us out again next week.